lot of white folk have reached out, expressing condolences, exchanging kind words, venting frustrations and regrets about the current moment, or even racism at large. Many have given me monetary reparations. All have asked me, in one way or another, what should I do to help? Here is my response to all of them. I think you know. And yes, it really is that difficult. There is no shortcut. It is a nasty, bloody untangling that will implicate every part of your existence and your memory. You will have to look it straight in the eye, name it, and actively fight against it every day of your life. Here is the truth. Every white person is racist. Every single one. Whether you ask to or not, whether you realize it or not, you have signed the social contract allotting you a certain amount of privilege and power over every non-white person based solely on the color of your skin and reinforced by centuries of genocide, institutionalized forces, policy, culture, language, etc, etc, etc. Not only this, but you have grown up comfortable in this contract. You have reinforced it yourself. You have even felt shame for doing so, but continue to because you do not know another way. You still believe that the police can be reformed. You believe that MLK was a pacifist and forget that he was murdered by the state. You center conversations about black grief around you because, and I get it, the floodgates are opening and you don't know what to do with all this energy, this sudden awareness that everything is tainted, this heaviness pulling you down, your shadow lagging behind you that seems to comment on every step you take with a do better, people are dying, it's your fault because you didn't do better. Here's another truth. Yes, you're right. And here's another. A lot of us still love you anyway. But some of us hate you. And you've got to be okay with that. I certainly am. And if you're white and upset by the fact that the love isn't reciprocal, I urge you to interrogate your philosophies on love. Why does love have to be a transaction? Why must you receive in order to give? What is the nature of the resentment that you're harboring? Is it bound up in pride and self-indulgence? Is your love predicated on virtue signaling and reward? Our love is our gift to you. And yes, it is really that deep. It really, really is. And I can only speak for me, but I choose to still love you because I choose to live in the utopia where this kind of critical thought, equity, and radical love can thrive and be standard. I choose to believe it because I have to to make it through the day. I have to remind myself of this every day, every single day, like an incantation and hold it close and nurture it and infuse it into every dicey interaction but some days I fall short and I will not apologize for that. I will not apologize for feeling too much. My body, my history, my very existence, whether I like it or not, has signed the contract that ties me to everyone's shadow and that simultaneously leaves my own to be swallowed up by the dark. This is a great burden. But it's also the greatest gift because I believe that this kind of empathy will save us. The theory that will build the utopia will be born out of this empathy. And I believe that it is my divine duty to get there by any means necessary. Any means. So what can you, white folk with bleeding hearts, do? Learn your shadow. Become intimate with it. Know it's every move. Talk to it every day. Know that it will always be with you. Interrogate it. Let it be soft. Do not take pictures of it and post it on your feed. Do not even let me know that you've embraced it. Because if you truly have, we will see. It will ripple through every intention you have. You will feel more pain because of this newfound acute awareness. And your closets will be filled to the brim with bones. They will be the bones of my ancestors of my fallen kin, and still attached to my flesh, still breathing the shadow of its own, and the pain will be worth it. I think you know this too. I think you've always known it.
Okay. Hi. Hi, Hi. Ange. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm all right. Um, for, for people who don't know you, can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, this question. My name is Ange Bay. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. And I am a storyteller based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Awesome. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jen Cleary Rubinos, she, her pronouns, and I am a photographer, filmmaker, and producer based here also in Philadelphia. Um, we're going to talk to you about a piece that we did together earlier in the summer called Learning Your Shadow. Um, and actually, Learning Your Shadow has this really interesting thing that happens because it is a callback to the last digital rally. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Ange, can you tell us about how this came about from the last digital rally? Yeah, so Learn Your Shadow was first a Facebook post that I wrote on a whim at the height of all of the riots that were happening this summer um, for all the various reasons. <laughs> and um, I wrote that Facebook post in like 20 minutes and then posted it. And then it got a lot of attention on Facebook mm -hmm. and Gabri Gabby um, asked me if I could um, read it, uh, read the Facebook post during the last digital rally. And um, I was on the call with Gabby and Kiara, and um, it was it was just me reading it, and I guess it resonated with a lot of people. And uh, Gabby and Power Street asked me to to work with you to to film it and do a cool little like voiceover movie situation with the text. Yeah, so. it, was, it was really great to work with you. Um, I saw it as a Facebook post initially as well. Mm -hmm. It was like. Um, it resonated a lot with me because uh, not only am I white, but I am Latinx. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of the times, those of us who, who ride both of those um, also have a lot of learning to do. There's this interesting like cultural thing where we sometimes don't think of ourselves uh, as being white. Yeah. But we very much are. I mean, my name, uh, the way that this <laughs> presents, like obviously no one's gonna, no one would ever guess otherwise if I was just walking down the street. So my experience of the universe is very different from like yours. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, also at the same time that this was happening, there was um, the We See You, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of us, I hope, uh, signed out there. Yeah, um, if you don't know about it, you should get in there and, and read and sign that manifesto. It's really important. Uh, and especially for those, Yes, yeah. for, for people yeah. who are theater makers. In the United States, I think uh, keep yourselves informed as to what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so you've seen the film at this point. Yeah. Uh, it was at the top. If you missed it, um, hopefully we'll play it again at some point. I'm sure uh, Power Street will have it on their website. But um, let's talk about uh, going from a post to being a short film. Oh man, yeah. yeah. Uh, what did you think of that process? Like uh walking around germantown i so i recently moved to center city so i watching the video it was like super nostalgic for germantown i lived there for like almost a year um with my lovely housemates and yeah it's a, it's a great neighborhood it's a great neighborhood that's already like bubbling with like uh, social justice and that's already like built into the culture there um it's a very like family oriented neighborhood people that have been there have been there for years and years and years. Um, so just like walking around Germantown, uh, I grew up in Philadelphia too. And um, I have family that lived in Germantown, which was like my impetus for moving there in the first place. It felt like, um, it felt really emotional. <laughs> it, felt, it felt really, really emotional. Uh, Cause I was able for the first time in a long time um, to like really like pay attention to, to my neighborhood in such like a specific way. Like it's so easy to walk past that Black Lives Matter um, crochet art um, on, in front of the old high school. It's so easy to walk mm -hmm. past that every day and just like not, you know, stare at it and and really appreciate it for what it is and and what it symbolizes. And there's so much artwork like that happening around Germantown, and and not even just like the artwork, but there's like historical sites that we're living and breathing and walking in like history. In, in that neighborhood. So I mm -hmm. thought it was a perfect place to um, to shoot, learn your shadow. Yeah, I really loved, cause as I was driving, cause I, I live in between Pelton and Mantua, which is also another historically black neighborhood. 
and driving from where I am to where you are, I noticed all of those crochets as I was driving to your house. And you remember, we went on that wild goose hunt, just running around <laughs> looking for Brianna. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. Because they were just so beautifully put, uh, spaced on that one block. And it felt like a really beautiful, loving tribute to all of these different folks who have lost their lives mm -hmm. uh, within the year. It was, it was just the folks that year. And we were only in, I think we were only in July when we did this. I think so. I think you're right. Or like early August. It was, it was still like, like we had just reached the halfway point of the year and there were so many names. And that uh, was such, um, it was such an upsetting thing to have that be so populated with people. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm glad that we got to walk through and, and see all those names and see all those different art pieces. And I feel like a bad person because I'm not remembering the name of the crochet artist. I think it's La Fresca Yarn. It's I feel Instagram. like you're right. I follow her. Uh, or follow I, will, I will tag it and I'll put a, yeah, a little. I'll put, I'll put something right here. Yeah, but 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 they do like amazing, amazing work all over Germantown, all over the city, mm -hmm. um, even on like bus stops and bus terminals and things in Germantown. There's cool crochet, just really mm -hmm. beautiful neighborhood. Yeah, and, and it's it's so, a beautiful <laughs> reminder for I mean, because Germantown, there's a lot of black folks, but there's also a lot of white white folks who live in there mm -hmm. and shop along Germantown Ave, and I think it's it's good to have those reminders. Oh, um, yeah. And for, for me, when we were shooting this, I, I intentionally took our walk and I kept repeating it. Mm. Um, so when you see it you're like, wait, it's, it's all choppy. And the reason I did that was because this is like the experience, I, I dare not speak for you, but I felt <laughs> like this keeps happening over and over and over again. Why does this keep happening all the time? And I wanted to talk to that repetitive nature of how um, just when you think you've been built up again, it gets tear torn down, it builds up and it tears down, it builds up and it tears down. And so for me, seeing this cyclical thing over and over again and hearing your words felt like the best way to represent what was going on. And unfortunately now uh, we're filming this in January. Yeah. And we're facing the same stuff still. Um, and well, that was always like, I don't want to be a pessimist or anything, but it, you know, like I say in the piece that, that like we, to live and strive for the utopia that we may not live to see or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that comes with the expectation that this is going to keep happening. <laughs> like, like it's going to keep happening so long as we keep allowing um, ourselves to live, live blindly. Um, yeah. And, and like, I say that vaguely because we're all in different places and and all of it, but yeah, it's t January, 2021. <laughs> and, 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 and yeah. yeah, I mean, within the first week we saw the siege on the Capitol, like yeah. we're, we're still seeing it. Um, and it's, it doesn't seem to be letting down. And that's, that's really upsetting for a lot of us. Um, but there's a really interesting thing that's addressed in the film, which is how do white people learn? How do, how do us white folks learn our shadow? And you say it so beautifully, and I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to this. Learn your shadow and become intimate with it. Know its every move and talk to it every day. Know that it will always be with you and interrogate it. Let it be soft. Do not pay, take pictures of it <laughs> and post it on your feed. Do not even let me know that you've embraced it because if you truly have, we will see it. It will ripple through every intention you have and you will feel more pain because of this newfound acute awareness and your closets will be filled to the brim with bones. They will be the bones of my ancestors, all of my fallen kin and mine still attached to my flesh, still breathing with a shadow of its own. And that is such, it's like a very beautiful gut punch <laughs> that we need to hear. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we yeah. we tear things down, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And 
Um, I, I, I specifically love the, you know, don't take selfies with it idea. Great. Everyone like turned their, their Instagram profile picture to black, a blackout space. And then like one by one, every white person is like, okay, is it okay to like put my profile picture back? And I like watched it happen over the course of like two months. I actually lovingly got very called in by uh, <laughs> another friend of mine who told me to not do that. And I immediately revoked it. <laughs> like within so within an hour i was like you're right this isn't me i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm just gonna go back to posting derelict buildings like i do <laughs> let me not let me not uh co-op this movement it's not for me and um i think that's that's really an important thing is to also not virtue signal um it does nobody any good um, and, that's, and like I was listening to, to this podcast on NPR, um, an older episode actually called Code Switch, and mm -hmm. they had a whole episode about how most white people in America do not have diverse friend groups, and they don't have sure. black people specifically in those friend groups, and that like, fuck it, like like it, I, 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 we get it, it, like, it blew my mind. It blew my mind, but also like it made a lot of sense um, because I often like wonder like don't you have black people in your communities like and not just like one black person but like we're not a monolith either and it really does start there it starts there are those interpersonal relationships it starts with your friend saying hey maybe i don't know if your friend was black but like having some like sort of like cult, uh racial understanding or cultural awareness or whatever yeah like, yeah you you would hope so but actually i started to think about that because i i'm familiar with that episode too and i started thinking about redlining uh -huh. and how we kept everybody away from each other and how we, we kept black people away from home ownership, which is generally a thing for the suburbs. And that's where we keep most white people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we gave them the ability to buy houses and have general generational wealth that we, we don't allow black people to have. Right. Um, right. So I, I started to think about stuff like that. I was like, oh yeah, because I mean, you're a city person, you're a city kid. You grew up in a, I grew up in a city too like yeah. it would be weird for us to not have friends from different ethnicities and different cultures and different religions and gender expressions but then when you go out to the suburbs and the other rural areas it's it's very white yeah and it's been kept that way intentionally it's yeah, absolutely and i grew up in southwest philly and i don't think i would have had the diverse friend groups that i ended up having in my adult life if it weren't for my parents um, placing me in like private schools in the city, honestly, um, and like getting that like proximity to whiteness and proximity to like um, uh, like like the toolkit that I needed to articulate what was going on like mm -hmm. racially and geographically in my life, um, and that and I'm like so grateful for that. But like, there's segregation that happens within the hood, you know, like, like yeah. there it's not an accident. Um, and I grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood, predominantly black and immigrant and Latino labor neighborhood. And so um, those were all my friends until my parents like said, oh, we need, we need to get you a better education. That's what that was, that's what their impetus was. It wasn't let let's have you have white people friends. It was like <laughs> get you a better education. Well, we we generally have reserved better education for white people. Right. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, I grew up in Washington Heights in New York. Uh, so predominantly you know latinx um and eventually we moved to inwood which isn't that further north but it's a huge difference all of a sudden i started seeing like uh irish american kids which i never saw uh <laughs> which was a, a really weird thing for me to say um, <laughs> it was it was a very confusing time for me i was like oh wait um <laughs> A new school. This is very odd. Hi, hello. I, I, I knew no, no I, I knew nothing. I knew nothing about Irish culture. It was hilarious. Uh, I <laughs> that's that's another podcast. Yeah, for I us. had I had I have similar experience. We should talk about that offline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just like I know nothing about this. Uh, teach teach me your potatoy ways. Uh, <laughs> Irish potatoes, dude. I don't. Okay, the Irish potato. So for, for those of you who are not from Philly, I didn't know what an Irish potato was until I, I came here and they're delicious. Balls of sugar. What? Balls You've been hiding this from the rest of the United States. Um, 
So what exactly is it? It's a, uh, it's a ball of sugar wrapped in like cocoa like, powder and cinnamon, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we it used looks like a potato. At my white, white charter school <laughs> in middle school, we had an Irish potato competitions and it's like cinnamon, some kind of icing and cream cheese. It's like wrapped up and refrigerated all tight and compactly. It's delicious. Yeah. It's, it's so, so rich. Sometimes there's coconut around it. I, I could be just no, I've I've seen coconut, but I don't understand how that fits in. Um, it's like, oh, yeah, I I don't know. But uh, now we've totally derailed talking about race and turned it into a culinary experience. Uh, <laughs> race is also a culinary. It is. It absolutely is. We can talk about we can talk about seasoning another day. Um, but um, let's see. Yeah, we're almost we're almost at the end of our time. <laughs> But um, I wanted to know if you, if you had to rewrite the piece now, what would you add in? What would you subtract? Is there anything that you would, you would put in? That's a great question. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything that I would subtract. Um, I think... Yeah, I, I, I always, there's there's a part in the piece that I talk about, some of us hate you and you need to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I want to write a whole nother piece about that. And like, and uh, I've shared, I've shared this, this status and I've shared like this text with, with several of my friends and a lot of my white friends and a lot of my white friends have reached out to me and they, and they have like told me that that section has, was the section that really got them like, whoa. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, oh, well, that was just like something easy that I, that like, duh, but, but so I would want to like add more about what that is. Um, and not only like as like an educational thing for like white folk or non-black folk, but like uh, just to start to unpack that and how I feel about that myself. Um, I think, you know, like this, that piece was for white people. The, the learn your shadow was a piece made for white people and non-Black people that want to start and need to start unpacking um, racism within their lives and themselves. Um, I would love to do a piece for Black people about us. <laughs> I don't know what that would be yet. I have ideas, but uh, I want to like shift my focus. Uh, I, I think I've talked enough uh, enough to white people about uh, racism for 20, 2020. We're leaving that in 2020. It's fine. 2021, we move ahead. 2021, I'm recentering myself regrounding myself, putting up some boundaries and um, really investing in my community, uh, which is diverse, but mm -hmm. black people as yeah. the priority. Um, yeah, so that I think I would just add, I would I would expand on that, that some of us hate you a bit because mm. it is strong language and I mean it, you know, yeah. <laughs> like. And it's yeah. not, it's not bad. And white people shouldn't expect everybody to like us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Ange, that's that's the end of our time. Um, oh. I know, so quick. Uh, <laughs> go, I know, but we should have a cooking show though. We should. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> I'm totally down for this. I throw um, down in the kitchen. I, oh, I do. I, do. I, 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 I want some of this. We're gonna we're gonna have to. We'll send each other. We'll send each oh. other little packages of food because now you're closer to me. Yeah, yeah, especially if I'm in walking distance. I've been walking up a storm now that we're close to, to peeps. So. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I want to say thanks to Gabby at Power Street for yeah, Gabby, making this piece happen um, and connecting Ange and I together to do this piece because Ange and I didn't even know each other before oh, this. Yeah. And um, it's been a real pleasure and honor to work with her. And I actually want to say uh, thank you to Donnell Powell, who. Yes, Donnell was in that meeting as well, who was just like, yeah, you make the film. <laughs> um, but like Donnell way, like way more passionate. Cool. Donnell is the best. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so with that, we were going to say uh, goodbye and thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank all you right. all. Whoever's listening. Thanks, Jen. Bye. Bye. <laughs>